Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be. This is Arthur Raga with Altria, and I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And I'm very excited to talk today on the subject of artificial intelligence, specifically um, as a path to the next generation of contract management. Um, I promise this is not going to be a pure play pitch for the offerings of our company. I will try to keep this uh, really more focused on emerging technology in general, how it plays into our space, um, and this way as practitioners on the kinds of challenges that we're faced with and what we're seeing in, in terms of uh, technology and approaches um, to overcome some of these challenges regardless of where we start the journey. You know, the, the journey of digital transformation and contract management is varied, and it very much depends on your point of origination. Um, and we'll sort of do some polls and some surveys throughout to level set the, the crowd. Um, and I look forward to today's session. Uh, again, for anyone on the call, um, and we do have uh, a bunch of folks, uh, we're gonna try to keep the lines muted. Uh, there is a Q&A tab um, as part of the WebEx uh, infrastructure. Thank you very much, Cisco. Um, and we will try to answer as many questions as we can um, as we wrap up the session. Uh, so we're about five minutes in. Um, I do like to be prompt, so we will certainly close on time. Um, horrible picture of me, but it's the best we can do. So what is the core need for you know, technology-driven contract management? Uh, you know, what we see really is folks have, have started to make a transition from uh, contracts as something that has to be stored in a, a cabinet someplace to assets that can be uh, reviewed and used and leveraged uh, to increase business performance. So, you know, some of the, the simple things that I like to ask is, you know, post-contract sign-off, you know, post-award, um, are contracts generally tucked away in shared servers, you know, up on a shared drive someplace, maybe in a DMS if you're fortunate enough to have one, um, or are they in email folders, or worse, actually printed out and stuffed in bankers' boxes and filing cabinets? Um, are you going back to those contracts only when you're getting called for an audit by a customer? for an audit by a vendor or audit by regulators. Um, are you able to use these contracts that you sign that are still active to measure performance against the contract? I mean, we think about it, we spend months negotiating a deal, that deal runs for years, um, or do we sort of forget about it once it's signed? People change roles, people move on, sales guys move, category managers change. Uh, sometimes we're not leaving, uh, uh, we're sort of leaving money on the table. And is there generally a challenge in getting things like contract visibility or understanding the full life cycle of a contract, getting advance notice for things like expiration or that you've got renewal coming up or what your renewal window is, what your warning windows are? And you know, fundamentally, there's a challenge in getting this information out or even knowing where to go. Um, if we combine this to an increasingly, I don't want to say litigious, maybe the right way to go, is uh, an environment where there is simply considerably more regulatory and uh, compliance issues that are ever-changing, whether it's uh, geopolitical, I mean, everyone is sort of up in arms about what Brexit is doing to their contract base, but also LIBOR rates and the new LIBOR rules, or earlier it was changes to IFRS 15 and 16, revenue rec and that at least. These are things that you need to go back and really look at your contract language and understand whether you are abiding by the best practice. Um, if you're looking at vendors and partners, what are you doing for you know, GDPR? Are your DPAs up to date? Have you really gotten your arms around the, the California personal information protection stuff? And who knows what will be next? Probably New York, New Jersey, even Kansas will have any regulation. I'm not making fun of Kansas, but it is just the way it is. Um, so these are all things that sort of drive uh, using contracts as active vehicles for business performance. You know, if there are core industries out there, and many of you are in them today, utilities, aerospace, defense, um, food, uh, pharma, um, where the, a very high percentage of your annual revenue is embedded within contracts. Uh, looking at some numbers from like our, our friends at IACCM, that organizations lose 9.2% of their revenue. This is a scary figure every year due to poor contract management. Even if that is you know, doomsayer and you know, twice the value, even if we're losing 4%, even 2% of revenue is a sizable number, all due to poor contract management practice. 
there are multiple approaches to improving the way we manage our contract. And technology is certainly one of the ways that helps us the most. I mentioned there'll be polls throughout and you'll see some polls coming up, but let's start with some basic definitions of the roadmap for digital transformation. Uh, you know, we look at probably four major buckets, if you will. Um, starting off in that manual stage, paper-centric, manual data entry, maybe not the most time-effective and perhaps even the most costly starting point. You know, versus those organizations that uh, are really looking at a more, a slightly more advanced, you know, line of um, capability. We move on to sort of the basic mode. This is where we're looking at a ECMS, Enterprise Content Management, or, or a DMS, Document Management Platform. And those of you who are slightly more uh, attuned or, or maybe see more value in your contract, looking at contract lifecycle management platforms. And now we're seeing a, a shift towards a, a more uh, intelligent, a more transformative platform today where we're going beyond core CLM and looking at how to leverage artificial intelligence. And we'll get into some definitions around AI. I want to demystify that. You know, when we talk with folks, sometimes we mention artificial intelligence and people sort of turn off. Um, they close up, their arms cross, like we don't need robots. Um, but it's a little bit more than that. So you can build your own artificial intelligence platform, sort of a do-it-yourself model, or you can have domain-specific artificial intelligence for but the inbound or outbound contract, buy side, sell side, operational and the like, um, that help facilitate categorization and data extraction and really provide a more robust framework for both tracking and finding and searching, but just as importantly, managing and optimizing your use of contract. So right now, we, up on screen, you'll see that we've pushed a poll and the poll question is quite simply, where are you in your digital transformation journey? Are you in that manual stage, A, or B, in that basic stage, or have you moved into the intelligent stage? Looking at AI for the first time, or D, are you actively using emerging tech and artificial intelligence? Uh, we've got this poll open for a little bit longer than I would imagine, so I'm going to ask our team to leave it open for about a minute and a half, not five. So for those of us watching the clock, we're about 40 seconds into it. I'll give everyone about another 40 or 50 seconds to answer. And then we'll ask the Altria team to tell us the results so we can see how those are interpreted. I know in the past, we tend to find a lot of folks sort of in that manual basic range, but let's see whether today is going to be an exception. Fair enough. Ultra team, let's close the poll down in another 10 seconds. And uh, Ultra team, uh, could you let me know what the poll results are? Uh, yes, Arthur, as, as you rightly mentioned, uh, probably more than half of uh, the respondents have mentioned BASIC. Uh, another, I think, 25% uh, have mentioned intelligent, and um, the rest have been distributed across transformative and manual. Very good. Thank you very much, Vinu. Uh, this is fairly consistent with what we see across the marketplace today, though I am very impressed that one in four of you have said that you're at the intelligence stage. Uh, that means that you're at that point of either just beginning the journey towards artificial intelligence um, or sort of you know, more emerging technologies, whether it be natural language processing or machine learning. Um, one of the things that we have found, and maybe this will help those of you who haven't made that move yet, is that at any stage in sort of your contract management maturity model, emerging tech, whether it's something straightforward like optical character recognition, digital conversion of image to text, 
can be used just as effectively at the early stage of your journey. And then leveraging artificial intelligence for extracting metadata to increase your visibility into your contracts and to really facilitate ongoing management, linkage, and ultimately transformative uh, performance management in the downstate. Uh, for those of you who are really in that basic mode and you've moved towards having a central repository or a DMS, what you may find is that tagging data from your contracts will give you a higher level of uh, reporting and visibility, and that the OCR capability combined with natural language processing can give you tremendous free text search and really leverage the value of your repository. For those of you moving a little bit farther into the intelligence stage, being able to couple AI to both parse and identify non-standard clauses and variations in your templates can help you route and triage your contract workflows. And then as we move to the more advanced stages, those of you who said you're already in the transformative stages, uh, the ability to really leverage the power of dashboards, notifications, and alerts by getting in front of risk within your clauses, leveraging technology to interpret and to present and to recommend specific approaches, um, even to the point of suggesting how best to leverage existing negotiation plans, playbooks, alternative text, or even as we see some of our more advanced uh, associates uh, looking at how to optimize uh, outside counsel uses. I mean, fundamentally, too, I, I think we're seeing that, uh, you know, there's a shift and in, in, in an increase in general costing. A lot of this just due to, I think, uh, labor or the complexity of contracts in general, that uh, taking a low risk, let's say, uh, services agreement and procurement, um, the cost of processing one of those to the average, uh, according to IACCM, I believe, our contract team has raised almost 40% in the last six years. And it's currently estimated to be $6,300 or $6,900 uh, on average per contract. Now, 12% of that cost of running a contract team is also associated with the management and administrative cost. So in addition to being able to get more value out of your contracts, we're looking at leveraging technology to lower your cost of contract management. So there's some core benefits to moving towards a more technology-enabled, more artificial intelligence-powered platform, uh, not the least of which is simply the digitization, standardization, and normalization of your existing contracts, identification through an automated process of missing clauses or non-compliant clauses, and the ability to generate and mass um, amendments and corrections to bring your terms and conditions for your parties, both your industrial best practice as well as your own corporate standards, and providing ease of use to access data in these repositories to provide overall risk mitigation and risk management. At the front end of your process, sometimes it also just goes back to getting your contract in the right way. Leveraging AI from a wizard and an RPA perspective, robotic process automation, to facilitate ease of use from integrated platforms like your CRMs, your procure-to-pay platform, your operational system, also helps to extend the value of your contract platforms across a larger number of users, effectively lowering your per-user cost and raising your per-user value add. So, Artificial intelligence powered technology really helps us accelerate contract signing, minimize our operational costs, and help us really get our arms around an increasing archive as well as an active repository of contracts. Uh, the average company manages between 20 and 40,000 net new contracts a year at any given point, according to PricewaterhouseCoopers. So some of the specific values of an AI-powered CLM is, in addition to sort of this unparalleled access and insight, uh, give you a more proactive view for contract performance and regulatory compliance. 
And you can do this by getting in front of your intake process with an AI-driven wizard to ensure that as contracts enter the platform, that they're interpreted, parsed, or ranked and rated, and then accordingly routed to the right teams, provide an exploratory or analytic view that allow you to quickly navigate with speed and, pre and precision to find information that you need to support the decisions that you need to make every day. And increasingly, and, and probably just as important, the ability to have software recommend either corrective or preventative behavior for those either high value or potentially high risk contracts by interpreting and understanding individual paragraphs and clauses and bringing to the right team members' attention actions that may need to happen in order to mitigate risk or to maximize your value. Now, you know, getting into this stage of sort of maturity with artificial intelligence can seem very daunting, uh, very, very difficult, or, or a very long way from where you are today. But continually approaches leveraging machine learning and converting sort of the approach from the data scientists, which we all read in the press as being a very hard sort of labor category for us to fill, especially in our legal teams, and migrating more to the citizen scientist role of letting legal professionals, attorneys, legal professionals, administrative teams, even your third-party LPOs, your, your, your legal process outsourcers, provide feedback and learning into these AI tools through machine learning, through closed-loop process, creates a more intuitive, more aware platform uh, to increase value and to protect you even farther. Now, we're sort of getting ahead of ourselves, right? We're talking about AI, machine learning, NLP, natural language processing. But, but let's get back to the basics of what are we really trying to improve? What are some of the core key performance indicators, the core metrics that contract and legal operation teams are trying to manage or should be trying to manage every day? And, and I'll, the reason why we bring this up is it's maybe not so surprising to some of you, but it's not unsurprising for us that we'll talk with someone and they're not quite sure what their starting point is, that it's when they deploy a CLM for the first time is when they start to get their baseline numbers and then look to see how things should improve. So these are some core metrics. And by the way, I already see some questions coming in. Folks are saying, can we get a copy of the deck? Will this be recorded? Um, and I hope that you'll see some great value in some of our, our material. Yes and yes. So it's being recorded. Yes, you can get access to this uh, in a PDF form as well as a record form. And um, our team will follow up with you after the event. Uh, if I look at just sort of the top six KPI, and these are things that technology approaches certainly can help uh, you know, impact so that your, your steady state gains and sort of your justification for your team's expense, both in you know, software and service and people and time and resource uh, can be proven out is, well, let's run them you know, sort of top to bottom, left to right. Uh, first of all, that's first draft creation time. Uh, what does it take to go from an intake request from a business user to having a first draft contract that you share with the other party? Uh, conversely, this might also be how long does it take to intake a third party contract rip it apart and understand what key issues are there and have your initial sort of counter prepared. You want to be able to cut that time at least in half. What is the existing average internal review cycle? So once your best first draft is generated, it needs to go through the business users, needs to go through legal, finance, risk. How can you accelerate this? How can you minimize the email back and forth, the phone tag? And how could you anticipate cutting that in half? The third one on the left is a little more tricky, untracked contracted earnings. What this really means is, is there money left on the table from a sales perspective? Obligations unmet, entitlements not realized. This is about being able to manage the post-award process. So once the award is made and you are now the, the proud owner of a signed contract, are you getting the funds that you expected on time based on your deliverable? 
time to find a contract. Uh, this is a place, arguably a very soft number, uh, but I've seen numbers anywhere to uh, you know, 24 to 50% reduction in time to find a contract. And based on the number of people, maybe in sales or procurement who are looking for contracts, uh, this adds up to serious labor costs. If I'm looking at finance ready metrics, just like untracked contract earnings, where you're looking at how much money was left on a table or not realized. Similarly, if I look at discounts not taken advantage of or volume level agreements not leveraged from a procurement perspective, what is the untracked contract spend? Uh, and we're seeing uh, uh, some pretty significant numbers, category to category, year over year. Uh, these are things that move the CFO level dial. And then, you know, last but not least, what is the total savings potential um, identified and what is the ultimate gain there? Um, oftentimes, of course, on the sourcing side. Uh, this is also a great way for those of you on the call who are looking to get organizational support. Um, and we'll chat a little, little bit about organizational rollouts um, as we move through and uh, start to wrap up our presentation today. So if we start with these basic KPIs, uh, a lot of which are very hard number based, right? Number of days or number of hours it takes, we'll say number of days to generate a best first draft, number of days for first review, uh, incremental revenue found, incremental savings captured, reduced time to find things. How does emerging technology really help us? And, and for that, really, maybe just a basic primer or primer for those of you uh, in Europe. Um, on some of the key TLAs, you know, the three letter acronyms. So CLM, Contract Lifecycle Management Platform, right, what that really manages is from request to renewal, the full lifecycle, not just the content repository. Robotic Process Automation, RPA. Uh, this is really not true AI. So Robotic Process Automation um, is about automating routine tasks. Uh, we often see this very successfully deployed during the intake process for contract requests, self-service, and the like, and we'll give some great examples. Artificial intelligence is a very broad term, AI, and this is really a broad term for programs that can stimulate the way the human mind sort of thinks. Really, we can take this in terms of reasoning, learning, and most importantly, self-correction, and this is where machine learning comes into play. Practical applied intelligence, and, and at least Ultra has been at this for a, a, a relatively long time, a, a little bit over 10 years, is that using machine learning, algorithms can adjust themselves to be more accurate and to have better coverage, simply through the use and feedback by legal professionals. Part of that is to leverage natural language processing, or NLP, which effectively reads text and understands both text and speech interactions to improve the way data is understood as well as represented. Uh, we use natural language processing as a, a wrapper after optical carriage recognition so that after optical character uh, conversion, uh, things are corrected, made more sense, and is the right input for the AI process. Something that comes up, and I just wanted to address this, uh, is blockchain. Uh, blockchain is an emerging technology. There's a lot of buzz around it. It's effectively a distributed ledger for transparent transactions, great in sort of financial market or commodity exchanges, but it's really not AI um, or uh, innovative uh, learning uh, in that respect. Um, it's simply a way to transact business. Um, we just sort of have this follow-on conversation about that. So, this could be looked at as either emerging technology or disruptive technology. And a lot of that's really going to be based on where you're starting today. Um, I think it's also a level of exposure to technology or exposure to the market. I find it increasingly common that when we are meeting with general counsel or associate general counsel, that they are fans of emerging tech. Uh, I guess they've been educated or they've sort of immersed themselves at some point in time. Um, but then uh, we'll find those outliers or the negative outliers in some ways uh, that have uh, surprisingly negative uh, uh, feelings or approaches about AI, uh, almost uh, to the point of being threatened by it. 
Um, some interesting numbers, though. Uh, if I look at uh, there was a, a recent um, Lexus Nexus survey that between 20 and 25 percent of all legal teams use AI in at least one aspect of their work, and it's usually not legal hold or matter management. Generally, it's around agreement, document, or contract management. Um, as a way to maybe find value applied, and again, you know, we'll share these numbers, uh, legal teams spend almost half of their time reviewing contracts as basic as NDA or standard procurement agreements or standard sales agreements. Uh, this is a bottleneck that can be easily uh, reduced, um, a throttle point or a choke point that can be removed uh, through the use of intelligent software that uses MLT and parsing and artificial intelligence to both read, to discern, to interpret, and to accurately rate and rank risk. Now, these technologies, you know, we mentioned, I'll say, disruptive versus emerging. Um, you know, the next, of course, is are they real or is this hype? And I'm sure many of you track, you know, the, the, the Gartner way, you know, the Gartner quadrants or the Forrester ways out there or you track IACCM surveys or, or the, the ACC or, or clock right up to the end, the analysts that are out there. But you know, fundamentally, you know, what is available today from a, a timing perspective, then we'll get into the relative risk and reward. So you know, things that we're seeing out there already um, is leveraging AI for metadata extraction, whether it's at sort of a performance stage, whether it's post-award, or whether it is at the um, income or intake stage. So maybe just a, a quick framework to the chart in front of us. Um, from the bottom, evaluation, assembly, implementation, and performance are four stages associated with the IACCM performance model. So evaluation is deciding what agreement to use, how to make the request. Assembly is the creation of either best first draft or the intake of third party. Implementation is really the negotiation and review. And performance is after the agreement's been signed. So available today from top to bottom, using mobile apps, robotic process automation, and portals to facilitate the intake and reduce that time to create your best first draft in the assembly piece. You know, further being able to facilitate negotiation and review, leveraging extracted metadata, and even doing some basic clause identification and risk weighting. And then once signed, being able to use this information for your reporting and analysis. Things that are just coming out now and are either in early stage adoption or for some of our customers in that sort of a beta stage ready to go to GA is using natural language processing to query or to chat. Think of these as the next generation chat bot or smart form and then using AI to disassemble third-party agreements, identify matching clauses, identifying missing clauses, and being able to facilitate even some level of automated first-level review and negotiation. And then ultimately now, um, in very much sort of that, you know, just about GA stage, a general GA is generally available, by the way, is the ability to extract obligations and to be able to manage obligations from contracts that are signed to help with entitlement and compensation. Things that are still right on the cusp is a more complex self-service environment, enabling more decision trees, and really what we're looking there is having a more interactive environment and one that can learn from the requester and be more intuitive. Uh, these are certainly that next generation of quasi-personal assistance. And then from an implementation perspective, leveraging domain-specific AI as compared to sort of a do-it-yourself data scientist mode. Uh, we've already sort of accelerated parts of that. And then we're looking at blockchain as a sort of an arriving or emerging tech in the post-award mode. And then things that are a little bit farther off is sort of that seamless interaction across different modules, right? Where contract lifecycle and the AI engine become more pervasive and start crossing the boundaries between legal operations, contract operations, uh, customer relationship management platforms, and uh, procure-to-pay or procurement systems. 
that I think we'll see that uh, artificial intelligence will begin to uh, extend so that the same engine and the same persona or the same algorithms are consistently used as a enterprise backbone. Now, each of these brings a, a different level of risk. So lower the risk, brighter the green, higher the risk, brighter the red, just that we all sort of think in terms of uh, traffic lights. So currently available, all relatively low risk, metadata extraction, mobile apps, well understood, well deployed, um, great value as well. We'll get to that on the next slide. As we look at areas of risk, uh, we're starting to see some negative impacts from poor AI implementations. A lot of this is around um, expectation setting. Uh, we want to think that AI means it'll read and understand a contract as good as a legal professional. Um, simply not the case, simply not there. You know, others are people who are, are looking for, you know, red line, um, third-party paper against my preferred template. Um, just not there. Takes a lot. Doesn't really work. Um, natural language processing for input. I think, too, there, it's almost an overuse. Uh, people are turned off by chatbots. Um, they don't want to be yelled at electronically. They can get yelled at in person or by email. But what they're looking for is a more intelligent form. They're looking for better interactivity. Uh, and that's something to be aware of as you look to launch. Um, and then I think you'll see some continued risk elsewhere. Um, from a reward perspective, uh, we're seeing very consistent feedback and use cases for uh, metadata extraction from third-party paper, um, robotic process from an intake perspective, leveraging good natural language processing for input, uh, but also being able to extract obligations, manage entitlements, and sort of manage the cash flow side, the revenue recognition side, both in terms of managing cash flow out from a procurement perspective, and just as importantly, managing cash flow in from a revenue perspective. Um, that is a measurable value that helps get legal teams and contract management teams funded for their next generation solution. Um, don't underestimate that and do reach out to us if you're looking for case study. So as we can see, there's some good gains that can be had from adopting AI in contract management. Um, let's maybe sort of dive a little bit deeper in, in terms of how some of those things can be realized. But first, another poll. So for those of you, I'm at the, uh, I'll say anywhere at beyond basic into intelligent or transformative stages earlier, if you've implemented a contract lifecycle platform, what do you use it for? And let's not be uh, embarrassed, okay? So A, or one on my screen, uh, is it a repository of signed contracts? Is this an electronic filing cabinet? Nothing wrong, it's a heck of a good start. Um, or B, are you using this to assemble standard contracts, generate your best first drafts based on your templates, your playbooks, your negotiation plans, and for some of you, maybe even clause library. And I want you to choose that even if it's only for a couple of contract types. Right? Um, I, I think we've all learned the hard way. Try not to boil the ocean, but you know, get a couple of good contract types, high value, broad. There are a couple of approaches. We'll talk about that later, um, but good uses. Um, third choice, C, are you leveraging automated workflow to route non-standard terms to appropriate providers right, or, or reviewers? This is just a little bit more advanced. But leveraging reading of your contracts either through a manual process or through AI, and then routing non-standard to the right domain or subject matter experts, whether they are inside or outside. And for those of you who are trying to manage your third-party legal costs, there is a huge value here in being able to streamline a process and manage your third-party legal at the same time. And fourth choice, um, compliance and obligation tracking. Um, and post-award management. Uh, this is where you start managing the revenue or the expense, leveraging your contract targets against your operational uh, realities. Um, we've seen some really great use, uh, some significant money, you know, a million here, a million there, pretty soon it's real money. Um, great uses of post-award compliance as a platform, but dying to hear what our participants uh, today are saying. 
So uh, we've run the poll for about two minutes. Let's go ahead and run another 20 seconds on the clock. Get us out to two minutes and 30, and then I'll choose team. Let us know what we have. And five, four, three, two. All two team, how do we do? Yes, Arthur. So uh, we see um, uh, an equal number of respondents uh, uh, for A and B, that is for repository assigned contracts, as well as assembled standard contracts from templates and class libraries. Um, and we also have a few folks uh, around 15% on option C, or automated workflow for agreement of non standard terms as well. Fair enough. So it sounds like 40 and 40 are thereabouts. From yes, a that's repository right. and contracts, and then um, a small percentage for workflow. Um, that means that almost nobody is doing post award at this point, right? Perfect. Um, only because this yes, way I'll, I'll make sure that as we continue, uh, I'll, I'll try to focus uh, any value propositions on the earlier. Something that I think is interesting is that 40% that are, are really leveraging your CLM or your DMS as a repository, it, it, that's one of those scenarios where uh, appropriate use of AI can really help ratchet up the value derived from your electronic filing cabinet approach, whether it's a, an ECM or a CMS or a DMS. Uh, being able to, to gain more insight into the contracts you already have can be really, really cool. Um, you know, here is the warning sign, you know, a little bit of an advert. I'm gonna use some screenshots from one of our products, Ultria Orbit, uh, which is uh, built for metadata extraction. So um, just to give you a sense, the ability to extract metadata elements directly from contracts, whether they be image or whether they be text-based, but also provide a level of indexing and identification of key clauses throughout the documents that you're managing. And then for those critical clauses, perhaps things like limitation liability, indemnification, uh, most favored customer, termination for convenience, uh, being able to identify contractual issues and the same capability, by the way, for things uh, that might be related to privacy, GDPR, RevRec, you know, sort of, uh, 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 you know, even is those in the financial space, you know, help find the, you know, all the, you know, variant. Um, and then for those of you who've often asked, hey, can you show me the differences between my preferred language in my format, in my template, and what third parties have provided, um, the ability to provide uh, clause-specific matching based on algorithms and interpretation of that data um, in the large sort of, you know, being able to run through and identify missing clauses based on your preferred templates. And then uh, as you may look at revenue rec or obligation management, um, that's where you can take your existing repository and add value triggers for obligations and entitlements effectively providing a, a more automated way to identify performing or non-performing contracts and extend the value of your contract management process. I don't mean the tools, I mean the tool, the team, the people, out to other parts of your organization and remind them of the value that you as a team drive to help the business can be incredibly important. So, I think this might be our final poll question, uh, but have, has anybody, and you know, we'll throw this out there, but again, from a percentage perspective, has anybody here implemented AI for contract analytics or document analytics? Um, and let's say uh, we'll make the choice easy. Uh, choice A, yes, and you've seen some benefit. B, yes, but hasn't really delivered against expectations. And by the way, that's sometimes because expectations are set incredibly high. Uh, or C, no, not yet. So we're gonna make this a very short poll. We're gonna keep this to a minute 30. So we've got 30 on the clock. We're gonna go another minute. And about 45 seconds left. When you think about AI, don't forget, that could include true artificial intelligence, reading, parsing, but might also be robotic process or chat box for intake. 
Because a lot of folks think of that as, well, it's artificial, so I'm not quite sure how intelligent it is. Gosh, I hope nobody tries to quote me on that. That makes for a really bad post. Ten more seconds left. Five, four, three, two. Ultria Marketing, how did we do percentage-wise? Yes, we've seen real business benefit. Yes, but didn't quite live up to the mark. Or C, still waiting. Yes, Arthur. So we see that uh, only 10% of the respondents have actually uh, marked as yes. Uh, we have seen real business benefit. Another 10% on uh, option B, and the overwhelming majority, 80%, is on no, not yet. Well, okay. Before I even move farther, hey, for, for your 80, for, for you 80%. We would love to absolutely show you guys a live demo at some point on how this could be used, because I think it is a great opportunity regardless of the level of maturity. So for you 10% that have tried it and done well, kudos, love to hear more. For those of you who tried it and had missed expectations, let's get together at the next major event and trade war stories over an adult beverage. Um, it's interesting though that it's 10 and 10 uh, versus the 80. Now, Sometimes that, you know, failure to, to, to launch, so to speak, you know, the AI looked like it was going to deliver value but didn't really, could also just be because of the rollout method. Sometimes getting to the right people um, can be a challenge. Um, I know some of you have seen some of our content. Uh, this is from last year's uh, clock out in Las Vegas. Um, if you're going to roll across the, the, the organization, there are some core steps, and this is, I think, absolutely critical for an artificial intelligence launch. Know where you are from a starting point and a systems landscape. It's one of those few places where making a friend with the IT department really helps you out. Um, we all know of some of the emerging general AI technologies, right? IBM Watson, you know, the big blue, playing chess, showing how smart it is, okay. Great platform, it's something that is raw, needs to be leveraged, used, trained. Um, Google AI, another very common emerging platform. These are the things that IT departments are using and they're leveraging and they're evaluating to see how AI can help them do their job. All good stuff. In the world of contract management, contract assessment, contract analytics, Having a generic purpose AI engine, it just leaves you short. In other words, there's way too much work. Uh, we find that having a contract management, agreement management specific AI engine that's already been trained with you know, millions of documents, tens of millions of clauses uh, across multiple domains, across multiple industries, buy side, sell side, IP, employment, you know, there's only so many ways you can write an indemnification clause, right? Allow that kind of platform to create a baseline understanding from your contracts with very high level of accuracy, very high level of coverage, of understanding your contracts is the right approach to launching an AI solution. Shorten your intake process, capture more information, Look at that value and put that value out among your legal operations team first to help getting some core champions. You know, reach out to that VP of sales, the sales ops team to help do some contract marketing, um, to help identify contracts prior to renewal so the sales team can get in front of a renewal and start the upsell process for the next year or reach out to those procurement guys, help them understand what their automatic evergreen process is so that they don't automatically renew deals that should be better negotiated. Identify those sort of killer clauses so you can adjust them. Help your IT team, your compliance team on personal protection, personal information risk, by, by providing these sort of, kind of, of sort of snippets of intelligence and then, you know, give some credit to the AI platform that helps you do that. Uh, that's certainly a good first start. 
And then you'll find that you'll have more in that first category of, yes, we've rolled and yes, we've seen value. And then and only then sort of deploy out the robotic process, the portal, the wizards to help with the intake process. And by all means, think about how to deploy this kind of intake and, and, and sort of broader use into your user communities based on where they live and work today. Uh, you know, we have found that being able to leverage your AI engine through your CLM out to your CRMs, your customer order platforms, out to your procurement platforms, out to your you know, non-disclosure or legal risk platforms, lets your users work in the environments they're very familiar with, and then you're adding value to that process by embedding an AI persona, uh, uh, a character, if you will, into that process to protect and to facilitate, um, to act as a cop when it needs to act as a policeman, to act as an enabler when it needs to act as an enabler, um, but do it within the framework of the platforms that they're using. Don't make them come into the CLM, don't make them come into another platform, let them invoke these things from where they are. Um, that helps you go from your originating point into rallying support with key stakeholders and by extending the use of the CLM and the AI engine into your procurement platforms, into your order platforms, into your intellectual property management platforms, you're using very specific use cases with a common AI model that is specific to contract types and it just makes the process so much simpler. Um, one step at a time across a very large audience or go into a, a smaller audience and go very deep. Um, these are great ways to sort of roll out and go forward. So yes, this is brought to you by Altria. Altria is both a very robust request to renewal contract lifecycle platform that enables the intake, the contract authoring, contract repository, leveraging secure Amazon Web Services globally, as well as post-award for obligation and entitlement management. And in the last two or three months, we brought to market and launched our AI, artificial intelligence engine named Orbit, uh, that provides the capabilities to manage the intake, to guide people through the authoring and review process, to enable data exploration, as well as post-award compliance. We've got about five minutes to go. Let's just take a quick look at our QA. Let me just bring it back to this page here while I take a quick look. And let's see what we have from a QA perspective. Um, well, we've got a number of questions, uh, both on the QA. Okay, you see. Um, did I hear that AI is not at the phase where it can identify differences between third-party contracts versus a CIE or a, a, an inbound or a customer template? Let me be very specific about that. Um, a question that we often get is if I have a standard, let's say, master services agreement or professional, let's use a professional services agreement, and I have a standard template and I have a third party that provides their paper. Can I see a line-by-line, -line, red line disk between my template and theirs? And the answer is no, because it's not a derived, right? If I'm looking at my standard template and someone has redlined it or made changes, of course the AI engine can help interpret that and facilitate the equivalent of a red line. What we have seen and what we have you know, practically deployed, what I mean by practically is we have deployed in a practical manner <laughs> in production um, is the ability to do a match level to say third party clause is 70% or 80% or 90% of my indemnity clause, my outbound indemnification, my limitation of liability. And here are the things that are indicative or issues that if you were to resolve them will bring you that 10% or 20% closer to fully uh, aligned. So it can provide guidance. It can suggest which areas of a clause or paragraph should be reviewed 
They can even link to your negotiation plan or playbook to suggest alternate wording, but it is not going to provide sort of that automatic click here and reread line. Now, the other uses of AI at the clause level um, is that it can quickly discern, okay, I mandate that my governance or my jurisdiction is going to be New York, Texas, Delaware, and nothing else. And this particular third party paper has option for a Dutchess County, uh, state of New York. Okay, great. So it's gonna work and it's a 95% match to my second alternate. Maybe I can say, let's accept this and move on, right? Those are things that are in deployment today quite, quite practical. Um, let me see here. Uh, another question, um, how does machine learning tie into artificial intelligence? Um, is it a different kind of AI? So um, AI is sort of the broader catch-all for artificial intelligence, uh, a series of programs or algorithms, right, that can interpret, understand, um, and discern differences between things. Um, it is not truly a thinking machine, but it is a machine language that can Strike the machine language. It is a series of programs or algorithms that can learn from feedback from a subject matter expert or even another program and can then adjust itself. So what machine learning is, is the way to provide subject matter feedback back to an AI program. So ML, machine learning, is one method of making artificial intelligence programs smarter. Um, question came up, um, oh, this is an easy one. How much time does it take to extract data from 10 contracts? Uh, let's ramp it up. Let's say I've got 1,000 contracts and I'm looking to bring out 5, 10, 20 metadata elements. Who signed it, when they're effective, when it expired, what their jurisdiction is, what governing law is, whether there's a termination of convenience clause, you know, you'll run a thousand contracts through a platform like Orbit in around six minutes. So faster than it takes to curate to fill up twice on my uh, Starbucks cup, uh, you can get the results and export the data directly into a VI platform. Uh, we are at the top of the hour. Let me see if I've got time for another quick question. Um, do, 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 uh, RPA. Is RPA AI? Um, RPA is robotic process automation. That's a great question. Uh, uh, that is sort of the uh, having a smart intake portal or um, chat platform. Uh, we like to think of them as intelligent forms. Um, when I did the risk reporting, there was a lot of negative risk associated with poor performing intake AI or robotic process because no one likes to fill in or answer questions are inappropriate. So uh, a good use of AI on intake is context and content and user aware. So based on the person and their roles, they should only be able to ask for certain kinds of agreements. And then based on what they're asking for, the natural language processing should interpret the request and as accurately and consistently as possible pose clarifying questions that are both uh, germane or appropriate and are content and contact sensitive so that the user doesn't have to go through more than six or seven questions, three to four to five steps, and that facilitates the experience. Uh, by the way, that in and of itself will reduce your intake cycle time by at least 50%. We've seen it reduce as much as 80%. Um, and that can uh, be one quick feather in your team's cap. Um, with that, uh, please continue to answer or submit questions. I uh, will answer them offline and respond to you individually by email. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this particular session. Welcome you in the future to others. Have a good afternoon, good morning, or good evening as you move forward in your day. From Altria, this is Arthur Agat, and thank you very much.